an exciting morning down here in the sunny south. For the last two years I've been doing all my operations, my woodworking, my tool restoration out of my parents' garage in the back garden. And this morning we're moving a rake of stuff down to our new workshop. So I posted a video months and months ago where I show this workshop, uh, but it's only now it's ready to move into. Uh, the owner has spent the last year pretty much uh, meticulously renovating um, this kind of farm building area. So it's only now that it's ready to move into, but wait till you see how far it's after coming. Mm -hmm. It's nice as well to have a place that separates work from actual living. But uh, yeah, here we are now, coming in the gate. So there's a beautiful lane leading down to the workshop. You're coming down, there's these trees that must be 200 years old on either side of you. These gorgeous stone walls lining either side. And here we are. Yo, hey, there's Mikey, who's doing a bit of work, a bit of repointing. It's a very old farm building that's recently undergone some fairly serious renovations. They put electricity inside of it, they repointed all the stonework and added two wonderful windows which I'll show you in a minute. So I was down here yesterday moving in a few bits and bobs but today is where I'm really moving in the bulk of the stuff. One of the handiest additions was this kind of set of stairs leading up to the entrance here. They rescued these big hand-cut flagstones from some of the other farm buildings over there. They just look incredible. Now obviously it is missing a door. We have a sheet of chipboard in place at the minute. Uh, we have timber ordered and once that arrives I'm actually going to be building the door for this place. Once we come inside anyway we can flick on the lights. So this here is the workbench that I bought off a secondary school in Roscommon over a year ago at this stage. So this is right next to one of the windows, we're getting a bit of natural light in there. So I moved this down yesterday along with a few of the tool chests. So it's at this workbench where most of the magic is going to be happening. I'm going to be restoring and using mostly hand tools at this bench. But that leaves us with all this space back here that we need to utilize. So what I'm thinking of doing today is bringing in the stuff from the car and heading into the lumber store to buy some timbers so I can make a big long L table there so I can set up some of my power tools. Now I know I'm mostly known for using old hand tools, but if I'm doing a job for money where I just need to get it done as quickly as possible, then unfortunately power tools are the most efficient way to go about things. So I will have to have a section dedicated to that. So this is the single axle trailer I got a while back and I've been using that to move some tools up and down. So we've got the table saw, the miter saw, and then we've got boxes full of hand tools in various conditions. So this box is full mostly of old plane parts, whereas this box over here is full of tools that probably only need a few hours work to get them going again. So this is pretty much my supply of tools that I use for restoration videos. I've got a rake of clamps and levels in here then. And then if we pop the boot, We've got the stand for the table saw, some clamps, and there's the big old beam drill. So I just went to Frank Clark Limited, it's a tool shop, I buy a good few tools from them. I went in to buy a broom and an extension lead, and while I was in there I remembered I need to buy an extractor fan, um, or a HVAC unit, or whatever the hell it's called. Pretty much sucks the sawdust out of the table saw and the crosscut saw. Basically stops the dust from just flying all over the place and keeps the place a little bit more tidy. So I would previously been using my power tools outside exclusively so the sawdust could go on the grass and to be grand. But now that I'm inside a building I actually need to manage my dust. So that was an expensive bit of kit but uh, essential and I have it forever now. I had a manual battery charger that I put in for repair about two or three months ago and uh, I used that for electrolysis just removing the external layer of rust from cast iron, bits of steel, whatever else and uh, while I was carrying it out the door, after it had been in for repair, I dropped it with an almighty crash and it cracked. So that was unfortunate. So we'll bring it home now and hopefully it'll still work and maybe a bit of super glue here in the car, we might be able to fix it up. But for now, we're gonna get lunch. I'm here now in a place called MDO Shays and Sons. It's where I buy a good chunk of my timber. So just spent 230 euro on some white deal that I'm gonna to use to make that bench. Well, I, uh, I left the roof racks at home, so uh, 
I might be taking the piss here a small bit, but it's only a short journey. Roof racks are bad for aerodynamics anyway. We made it back in one piece. So I have the chop saw set up outside in my usual fashion. I have a few lengths for the legs marked on this 4x3. We're going to cut it. I think the fuse has gone on it. Bollocks. So it's uh, shaping up fairly nicely. I would have thought that by the end of the day, I might have this table in place here as well. But unfortunately, I'm after running out of screws, so we'll have to do that tomorrow. But for today, this fella's in place. The idea is we're gonna lift this table up a small bit so that when the wood feeds through the table saw, it can head right onto this bench here. Now, this chop saw here is gonna sit in to this gap here. This is also going to be flush with the table, so we can cut big long lengths of timber. Now it's time to test out this bad boy, this fancy vacuum cleaner that I probably overpaid for, but hey, support your local tool shop, right? So apparently, you plug this fella in here, and you get, and yeah, now we need to figure out this mess of hoses. So I have this yoke here, this fella goes in here I'm assuming, grand job. And this fella goes here, no there's some connector now we need. Okay, it turns out it just needed a bit of friction. Well I could definitely feel a bit of suction, I'm not too sure if it caught everything because there's still a bit of dust here and there, but it also comes with, we release this here, these other heads which we can just plug on, and I'm assuming, maybe this is the right one for the job, but I'm assuming they'll all scoop up the rest of it. So I haven't screwed down any of these boards into place yet, and the reason being is they're sopping wet. Like this is just as wet as wood can be. They're out in the rain, uh, so I'm gonna leave them dry out in here for a while. When they dry, they'll shrink, they won't be as wide. So gaps would have formed between the two planks, or the three planks, had I screwed them in place. So instead, we're gonna wait for them to dry out, and when they do, we'll clamp them all together, and then we'll drive them into place, just so there's no gaps, so nothing can fall down in between the table. I've moved the crate of tools down underneath the table. We've got the air compressor there. The lathe, which will eventually be moved over here, is now there. The beam drill is grand there. Um, here we have that dust extractor, vacuum, whatever the hell it is. Test it out, seems to be working. I wonder is that hose long enough for it to reach this table saw over here? Or will I have to do some working around? But we'll figure it out as we go along. I had good fun making this kind of vlog thing today. I'm off to go swimming now, so maybe I'll include that. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. I might continue this vlog thing if this thing gets a good reaction. Here we are now in Mullenhassig Waterfall. Doing a bit of jumping. 